Greetings everyone. Thank you for watching this video. Today we are going to discuss about something really interesting. And that's about one of my favorite uh, service providers around uh, object storage, which is Wasabi. They have really great marketing on their YouTube channel, like Move to the Cloud with Nate. That was a video that I absolutely enjoyed. And they have really great pricing as well. And today, or well, I, I must say that just a few days ago, they announced the uh, object lock capability. So now you can benefit from great pricing on, uh, on Wasabi and then as well that extra security layer, which is object lock. So now we have a few a few challengers on the on that space, and I would recommend uh, for you to take a look into this new Wasabi with uh, with object lock. Um, what are we going to say to, to see today? We are going to see how to prepare the bucket on the Wasabi console, plus how to add it into the Beam backup and replication as well, and of course how to create everything, send the backups uh, into Wasabi, and we will do a short demo about trying to delete some backups. So without any further ado, let's go ahead into the console and well as you can see uh it's as simple as you just login into your wasabi how to cloud storage console with your user and password with your credentials and then i might have some bucket there already uh so you can ignore that and then what you need to do is just create bucket it's as simple as that and then put here some name like a v needs to be unique by the way so Veeam, Wasabi, Immutable, and then select your region. And this is quite important because Wasabi is not just yet in every single country. So you need to uh, look for that um, data sovereignty. And then if we click next, it's as simple as packet versioning. We need to enable that and then after enable object locking. If this option it does not appear on your console, please just open a quick ticket with the Wasabi guys, Wasabi support, and they will enable that uh, feature for you. You cannot move data from or change the bucket once created, so you will need to create new buckets in order to do the uh, object log. I have already one access key over here, but of course I'm expecting that you will have already uh, different access keys. On the Vim console, we go to Object Storage S3 compatible. We just select here some name, some descriptive name for this bucket that we just created right now. So Vim Wasabi Immutable, it's good enough for me. The service point and the region, it depends of, uh, of where you have created the bucket. So remember that it's quite important. So for example, the service point for Europe Central is that one and the region itself you can find it here is eu central one so just bear in mind that because you will need to change it the credentials are the ones that we uh, have selected before the access keys now on bucket we need to select the new bucket with that uh, object lock that we created create a new folder as per usual so in this case beam and now uh, immutable that's okay, that's a good name, click OK, and make it recent backups immutable 30 days. And I'm going to, um, and I'm going as well to limit it to one terabyte, so I do not I do not store more than, more than one terabyte because that is probably my budget, so. And that is that simple. Uh, it's nothing difficult, right? A couple of steps on the Wasabi console and a couple of steps on the VBR console. Now we need to combine something that we have on-prem, some storage, uh, some backup repository with backups, and then do something with them into the object storage. So let's put here the name of this packet, like S3 compatible Wasabi, it's okay. And then the description, sober to tier, from on-prem to Wasabi with immutability. And then let me edit that, hey, okay, next. So again, I'm just selecting this repository. I know I have a couple of Linux VMs there, or maybe one. And then capacity tier, on capacity tier, we are going to extend it to Wasabi. And I'm going to select just the copy option, meaning that all my points that I have on-prem, they will be copied over there. So I, I will have a second copy into an offline site. So just to follow the three to one rule, right? Okay. Um, 
is asking me if I want to copy right now every single point that I have or just the latest chain that is open. I will select all because I know what I'm doing and I know that my Linux chain on there on the on the VMs is not that big, so uh, it's okay. Maybe in your case, take a look uh, because maybe you just want to uh, copy just the latest chain open, uh, okay? So what this will start doing, once again, it's taking everything on that backup repository on-prem and send an exact copy into the um, Wasabi S3 bucket with immutability with object lock. It's, it, ha, it found 17 backups. So once again, they might be a couple of chains, uh, probably two weeks, uh, two weeks and a few days um, of this single VM. So I can show you what I mean with that single VM. Uh, so I can show you quickly what I'm sending or what Veeam is sending automatically into the um, into the repository, into the into the object storage. So let me show you quickly here into the console. We click close here, and now you see. This is the one that I have on the on the new scale-out backup repository. And if I go into properties on the job itself, as I said, it's just one VM, five gigabytes, and then with with all the chain, probably three weeks or something. Um, now we can see the uh, the job is running and the job is sending data already into the uh, into Wasabi. If we want to take a look we can go back into the bucket that we have created in Wasabi and then inside the bucket it will be a, a folder called Beam, a folder called Archive. Inside that it will be the folder called the one that we call Beam Immutable. We selected that name before and now it will have uh, some encryption and it will have as well just the data here with the metadata. So blocks and yeah, as you know, Beam just slices every VB, uh, VBK and VB uh, incremental or reverse incremental. It just slices those into chunks of up to one megabyte. So um, yeah, that's quite perfect. It's everything is working as expected. And as you can see here, it's already sending uh, data into Wasabi. If you don't select anything by default, it will use pretty much all the internet to try to uh, offload or to upload all of this data. So I would recommend it to you um, to enable maybe throttling and take a look into this. So I move it quickly so you can see that it has finished and it just move all my, sorry, it just copy all my points into object storage. I haven't select any move option and I will explain that uh, maybe a bit later. So I just copy, I just have a second copy of my backups over there. And well, if I go here into object storage and I try to delete those points in time, I don't know, I might be a malicious insider or it might be like a ransomware or I don't know, uh, some, somebody to trying to, to delete backups or to make a copy of these backups. So later on it can, um, yeah, it can, it can ask for, for a ransom. Hopefully what we will see over here, yes, uh, we can see it cannot delete those backups. And the reason it's a bit, uh, let me move the mouse a bit here. Yes, so it, uh, is, it is telling us that it's immutable until the 20, uh, 20th of June, so 30 days from, uh, from today, which is okay. If I go into disk and I try to delete it, it will fail as well, uh, mostly because I'm targeting the scale of backup repository, which is smart enough to understand that it's a combination of disk and object storage. But imagine that the local disk is a Windows repo or even a Linux repo and it, it got infected by a ransomware or destroyed, physically destroyed or something happened, which it can happen these things. At least you know that the point in time that you have on object storage, it will always be there. So um, this is that's the end of the demo. So hopefully you like what you have seen over here. My personal recommendation is to, of course, give it a try. I'm using the 30 days trial on, on Wasabi. If you do not see the option of uh, object lock, please uh, yeah, send a, a, an email to support because they enabled it to me within five minutes. So it was that was quite, quite impressive. And as well, um, 
maybe take uh, take as well extra extra uh, look into the regions because wasabi they are not in every single country as i did mention so depending on your data sovereignty and your laws that you need to follow from your backups you might not be able to use them uh, but anyways in pricing and now with object storage the, it's they are a really really attractive option to uh, to take a look and to consider if you are looking for some sort of more long term long, long term archiving like sort of glacier or uh, azure archive and all that stuff probably wasabi is not uh, the best option because at the moment they do not have any option of doing um, the glacier or to doing any sort of uh, even deep archive and so on it's more for hot uh, blob storage which is absolutely perfect for that uh, copy that uh, that short term copy of your backup so once again for your weeklies for, uh, for sorry for your dailies of seven days or 14 days or 30 days those are absolutely perfect um, because it will allow you to do your backups locally as per usual and it will allow you to have a second copy somewhere else which in this case is wasabi and in which this case is with immutability with that object lock so it's very very attractive and again give it a try with that 30 days no um, no credit card or anything is involved you can create the account and within one two minutes you are already in and you can create the packet and start sending backups so once again thank you so much for watching the video and hope to hope we can see each other soon thanks bye